being an immigrant myself, um, first generation American, you know, you, you get pitched that idea, you know, the American dream. Um, it's very beautiful. And I think a lot of people don't really appreciate that. Um, you know, if, if they've been an American citizen for a long time, they don't really understand that 99% of the world doesn't have the freedoms we have here. So I, I agree with that. Um, now, Ray Dalio, which recently stepped down from uh, from Bridgewater, he had the he had a very interest he had a very interesting theory. He actually wrote a book about it called The Changing World Order. And he was basically making the case that exactly what you mentioned earlier, right? That the US potentially could be on a decline and the rising world power is China, right? And we all know what China wants. China wants the central bank digital currency model. Um and I think it's it's a terrible mistake by the U.S. government pursuing that rather than pursuing Bitcoin. But in the process of pursuing Bitcoin, the government's going to have to give up power um, that it normally would enjoy having, you know, the having being the the head honcho of the money. So what are your thoughts on that theory? Do you, do you believe Ray Dalio is correct or do you think that Bitcoin changes that completely? Because his theory is based on the the world leader the world the country the the country that leads the world issues or is the head of the 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 world reserve currency at the time so it went from great britain they lost it due to world war one or world war two then it went to united states and now he's making the theory that it's china stepping up the plate from my perspective i believe that yes the u.s could potentially lose power of global reserve currency but through the dollar, but it could still remain in 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 the lead if it embraces Bitcoin. But in the process of embracing Bitcoin, it loses that privilege. Or specifically, the United States government loses that privilege of creating money out of thin air. So, what are your thoughts on that theory? Do you agree with it? What are your thoughts on Ray Dalio in the first place? Well, firstly, for Ray Dalio, congratulations on an incredible uh, career, sir. Uh, you successfully melt the fiat system to its absolute end. Uh, You're going out on top. You uh, had a plus 30% year last year, and you just fucked the system perfectly, okay? So great job, Ray Dalio. You fucked the system better than any of us fiat traders have ever fucked the system. So congrats. Now, if you don't see the lunacy of your uh, projections, it means you and... uh, I hate to say it, Chinese wife want the uh, the the uh, Chinese uh, model business model to succeed. I'm going to take the other side of that trade. Okay, Ray Dalio understands the debt spiral that the USA is in. It's only grade eleven mathematics. He laid it out very clearly in his uh, in his uh, uh, book in his writings. Yeah, it's not that difficult, So, but I will tip my cap to you, sir, because you and I see the debt spiral the same way. And he actually believes in Bitcoin, but he hasn't allocated Bridgewater to Bitcoin because Bitcoin is too small of an asset class as it is right now. Okay, so at the end of the day, there will be people who are smaller than Bridgewater that can take a position in Bitcoin to be a meaningful position with respect to their portfolio, they the same math and realize this spiral, DEBT spiral, is only grade 11 math, and there's ways of solving that. There is a way of solving that debt spiral where Bitcoin becomes your savings account and your fiat currency checking account fiat currencies in the and in and of themselves are not a bad thing they facilitate global trade they're not good as a savings mechanism but they are good as a mechanism to avoid barter okay and ray lays this out beautifully in his book and it's like he knows the solution is bitcoin he just can't put it on paper because he'd probably get i don't know eliminated let's just say eliminated by the u.s system because the biggest hedge fund in the world is seen as endorsing Bitcoin, the only solution. So there's lots of little, you know, machinations that come in here. But the fact of the matter is he played the Fiat Ponzi perfectly. He played it like a fiddle. He played interest rates when they went from 14% to down to under 1% in the U.S. 10-year. Then he reversed course 
And he started shorting the same bonds that he was buying all the way down when the rest of the world was too silly to understand what a negative yield on bonds means. And he just said, well, the rest of the world's a knucklehead and I'm going to fill their boots. And that's when you get a plus 30% up here. So once again, sir, you played it like a fiddle. I could not have even come close to succeeding to the level you have succeeded. But if you can sleep at night because of your ability to sit back and absolutely destroy people's savings because of your force, uh, uh, your ability to use leverage to fleece the system. All right, sleep at night. You're a conflicted fucking fool, okay? If you have children, you should be ashamed of your performance. I have three kids. I care about my children's future. This is why I want Bitcoin to succeed. Because fat white guys like me and you, Ray Dalio, fat white old guys like you have pulled forward gains at the expense of our children. You should be ashamed of yourself taking the benefits of your children for self-fulfillment in the here and now. I'm speaking out against this. Do you have the backbone to do the same? If you don't, you're a fucking loser, sir. Please send this directly to Ray Dalio's email. You are a shameful fucking loser. Sorry, I can't say it any other way. <laughs> Thank you, Greg. Um, I feel the same way. Um, but, uh, and that, so another thing. Um, you, you mentioned it and, you know, you mentioned it earlier, right? There is no other tool that can fix the fiat Ponzi. Why is Bitcoin the solution to this? If Bitcoin was, you know, the global reserve currency or if Bitcoin was being used, right? Why couldn't people like Ray Dalio do what he did in the fiat system? Okay. Um, we have to be careful because Ray Dalio started his which is called risk parity way before Bitcoin was conceived. Okay. And Ray Dalio's strategy worked very well with all the available tools that were, uh, you know, that lived at the time. Bitcoin was invented or not even invented. I believe it was discovered uh, 13 years ago. And it's grown to an asset size right now of slightly more than, 350 billion dollars but to understand how insignificant that asset size is to a levered hedge fund like bridgewater it's not surprising that he can't use that tool it's just too small if he got into bitcoin in any sort of size he would dominate the market and he can't manage his risk that way so i'm not blaming mr dalio for not embracing Bitcoin over the history of his hedge fund. What I am blaming Mr. Dalio for is not coming out and saying that Bitcoin is the solution to the Ponzi that he made all his money on between 1990 and 2020. He knows the answer. He wrote a book on it. But there's certain people that are pulling his strings that say, well, Ray, come on. The fiat system is your lifeblood. You can't stab us in the heart after you've made a career on the fiat system. And perhaps that's sinking in. I'm just voicing my opinion that if he had a backbone, he would tell the truth. And I guess maybe as a naive Canadian, I would assume that there's a lot of people up here in Canada that would actually tell the truth. I would hope that there's that many in the United States that would tell the truth. I don't know if a lot of them live on Wall Street. But there's guys like Larry Lapard, who lives in Boston, that would tell the truth. Okay, so, man, oh, man, this is not easy for me to say this because I was in a somewhat similar position to Mr. Dalio. I never was nearly as successful as he was, but, you know, I did okay. I'm trying to make amends. I want this system to succeed because I believe it will ensure the continuity of the freedom of the United States for the generations of my children and my grandchildren. I don't hear him talking that way that often. 
He's looking in the rear view mirror. I prefer to look out the windshield and try and plan for a future for my kids. Jeff Booth is exactly the same way. Okay. We're trying to design a system that is beneficial regardless of class, the Cantillon effect, whatever you want to call it. It allows everybody in the world an equal shot at a store of value that is colorblind. It's, you know, it is beautiful. It's agnostic to some of the real problems that we have in our, uh, in our, in our social society right now. So it's not easy, Nico, you know it, right? I mean, I'm just very happy to be part of this community. Uh, that's a bunch of do-gooders. Okay. We're doing good by doing well. And wall street's not like that at all. I've worked on wall street for 30 years of my life. Wall Street is 99% takers. The Bitcoin community is 85% givers. That's a diametrically opposed community. I'm going with the givers. Okay. I want the givers to win because hope over evil. I want people to be given a fair shot regardless of where they started their lives. You don't have to be a silver spooner to succeed. You can succeed at the bottom of the privilege level. And that's an efficient market. And Bitcoin is my best measuring stick on an efficient market like that. A fair market. Uh, thank you for that. I'm trying to speak the truth. Again, I have three kids, people. Like, I'm fine. I don't need people to, you know... I'm, I've done what I need to do, but I need to do this for my children. I need to do it for your children. I need to, uh, the selfish Wall Street fucks that are doing it for themselves. I need to call them out and start thinking about the children for the kids. That's my tagline. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, you know, this one of the, one of the main motivations, one of the main messages from Simply um, is people don't understand, but I think you hit the nail on the head. My generation, specifically the millennial generation, the Zoomer generation, we don't own anything. We're no more than Russian serfs. It's completely different than the generations that came before us. Um, I don't have another option. Like Bitcoin is my way. It's Bitcoin's my only hope for a better future. Um, without Bitcoin, personally, I would not be where I am today. And I've seen that story play out so many times. Uh, Opti's, you know, being so kind, sitting on the floor right now producing. And same thing. I've heard that story happen over and over again. We're hearing that story play out on a national level with the country of El Salvador. Look at the wonders it's done there. It's only yes. been legal tender for a year and a half. So I agree. One year. Uh, yeah. um, and, you know, people like yourself, Greg, like it's what you said. And Jeff is the same, right? You don't need to be here. You don't need to do this. I need to be here. I don't have a choice. There is no choice for me. Um, it's either Bitcoin or slavery. 